In 2074, time travel is finally discovered, however it's immediately made illegal and only people in the black market use it. Tracking systems have made it impossible to get rid of bodies, so a syndicate of criminals starts sending their victims to 2044 to be killed and disposed of. The ones doing the killing are known as loopers, and after the victim is dead, the looper can check their body to find the payment in silver bars. If a looper survives until 2074, the syndicate sends him back to be killed by their younger selves, this is known as closing the loop. This payment is made in gold bars to mark the end of the contract. Also in this world, 10% of the population has a mutation that gives them telekinesis, but they aren't very powerful and only make small things float. In 2044, Looper Joe waits in farm far from the city, counting the minutes on his pocket watch. Suddenly a person from the future appears and Joel immediately kills him. Then he takes his silver and carries the body to an abandoned factory, where the bodies burn down. Afterward, he goes to the Looper headquarters and uses the silver to pay for more ammo. Joe lives in a pretty sketchy neighborhood, but he still drives his fancy car without fear. He goes for a ride and comes across his co-worker Seth, who is shooting his weapon to scare off the guy that damaged his bike. Joe offers him a ride and during the trip, Seth keeps showing off his telekinesis with a coin. The duo makes it to a club and they get special access through the back because they're loopers. Joe visits his crush Susie, who is in the naughty business. In a secret room, a bunch of loopers gather to watch a co-worker who recently killed his version from the future. The man doesn't look bothered and announces they must celebrate. The loopers spend the night partying and using illegal uppers in the form of eye drops. While driving around town, Joe almost runs over a kid, but he stops just in time. For the next few days, Joe continues to work as usual, killing people from the future and getting his silver. However there's tension among his co-workers because too many loops have been closed recently. One night, Joe wakes up when someone keeps on knocking on his window. He opens it in a shock to find a panicking Seth, who comes inside and drops big news. When his latest assignment came from the future, the guy was singing a tune from Seth's childhood. Seth removed the bag from his head and realized this was himself. Old Seth explained that in the future there's a new crime boss called Rainmaker who is closing all the loops. Present Seth untied the guy's hands and old Seth used the chance to run away while young Seth was frozen, unable to kill his future self. Letting your assignment escape is against the rules, so Seth is now in trouble. At that moment some armed men from the syndicate start pounding on the door so Joe lets Seth hide in the secret compartment in the floor with his silver. Then Joe opens the door and a group of men led by Kid Blue come in. They search the apartment for Seth and don't find him so Kid Blue takes Joe back to the club. While they wait, Kid Blue plays with his gun and Joe calls him childish for it, causing Kid Blue to point the gun at him. Suddenly a door opens and hits Kid Blue on the head, making him fire by accident. Next Joe is taken to see Abe, the guy from the future who set up the syndicate branch in the present. Abe threatens to confiscate half of Joe's silver if he doesn't give up Seth. At first Joe hesitates, but he remembers he has a dream to leave this hellhole of a town and tells Abe the truth. While Abe's men leave to finish the job, older Seth continues to run and notices scars appearing on his arm, telling him an address to be at in 15 minutes. He starts climbing on a fence to escape, but at that moment he loses his nose, meaning Abe's men are torturing his younger self. Older Seth finds a car and drives to the given address, but then a leg disappears too and he crashes the car. He comes out as his other leg also disappears and drags his body to the right door, only for Kid Blue to appear and shoot him. Behind Kid Blue, young Seth finally dies on the torture table. Meanwhile Joe visits Susie and asks for comfort as he admits what he did to his best friend, not feeling good about it. He offers half of his silver to Susie, who turns it down because she knows Looper silver comes with strings attached. Later when Joe goes home, he finds Seth's blood. The next day he goes to the farm for his next assignment and can't believe they're late. Suddenly a guy appears without a bag or rope. Joe realizes this is his older self and freezes, giving old Joe time to turn around. By the time young Joe shoots, the bullet hits the bars on the man's back, confirming their gold. While young Joe recharges, old Joe throws a bar at him and punches him to knock him out. Hours later, young Joe wakes up alone and finds a note in his pocket that says hop a train out of town and run. Joe ignores this and returns to the city, destroying his phone on the way to his apartment where he finds the door open and a total mess in every corner. He hides when he hears some voices and notices Kid Blue stealing all his silver. Joe waits for the right moment and jumps on Kid Blue to push him into the compartment, locking the lid. Kid Blue opens fire anyway and more of Abe's men appear, so Joe jumps through the window and tries going down the fire escape. Unfortunately he slips and falls on top of a car falling unconscious. In another timeline, Joe does kill his future self. With his contract over, he travels the world partying and becoming a hard addict. Eventually he runs out of money and has to start working as a hitman to maintain his lifestyle. This means he starts killing again and even causes explosions in different cities. As years pass, he gets old and becomes future Joe. 23 years after he closed the loop, he meets a beautiful woman at a party who gives him the finger. However two years later they're happily married. Thanks to her, Joe has managed to leave his addiction and hitman days behind and now he's a clean man. Five years later, 
the Rainmaker's crimes are all over the news. Joe wakes up one morning and stares a weird number written on his hand. Suddenly a bunch of men enter his house, they're from the syndicate, who have come to capture Joe because it's 2074 so they must close the loop. Joe quickly surrenders and he's taken away while the house is burned down. Later in an abandoned building, Joe waits for the men to surround him and starts a fight, knocking them all down in just a matter of minutes. After making sure to choke the last one, he takes one last look at a picture of his wife in his watch and enters the time machine to send himself back to 2044. Old Joe appears in the other timeline, knocks down his younger self, and takes his gun before escaping. He goes to a store to get food and medicine, using his gun as a threat instead of paying. Then he starts getting visions from young Joe's memories, seeing him destroy the phone. By following these visions, old Joe starts stalking his younger self, who is returning to his apartment. Old Joe knows Abe's men are around, so he waits for the one in a car to look away and shoots him. Then he takes the guy's gun and goes to the apartment building, where young Joe is going down the fire escape. As his younger self falls, old Joe shoots at the guy in the apartment to kill him, then he takes young Joe away. The news soon reach Abe, who gets Kid Blue off the case and makes a plan with his other men to capture both Joes. Moments later, young Joe wakes up alone at the train station, but he still refuses to leave. Meanwhile old Joe breaks into the library and searches the numbers on a database. Those numbers show three possible kids that could be Rainmaker, so he prints a map with their locations. On his way out, some scars appear on his arm asking him to meet at a diner. The next day old Joe goes to the diner and finds his younger self with a bandage on his arm, confirming he sent the message. They ask for the same dish and old Joe shares the story of how his wife saved him from addiction, sticking to his side during the hardest moments. The day the syndicate came to his house, the men saw her by the window and killed her. Old Joe tried reaching for her, but the men quickly tased him down. Next old Joe starts talking about the Rainmaker, who is behind mass executions and vagrant purges in the future. In just six months, he took control of the five major syndicates, yet rumors say he works alone. Nobody knows his face or his real identity. The Rainmaker is closing all the loops and before dying, a looper friend of Joe's called him to give him the strange numbers as a clue. Old Joe shows his younger self the map, explaining he's come to find the Rainmaker and kill him while he's still a child, hoping he can alter history and save his wife. Young Joe refuses to be part of this, so he promises the old man to marry someone else to keep the wife safe. Old Joe refuses to give her up and when young Joe reaches for his gun, old Joe kicks him in the groin and hits him in the neck to bring him down. At that moment Abe's men appear outside, so old Joe uses his other self as a shield and opens fire as the enemy comes in. A gunfight ensues and old Joe tells his young self to run away as he drops him. As he falls, young Joe takes the chance to tear off a piece of the map. Then young Joe opens fire on his older self too, forcing him to jump through a window to escape. Soon Kid Blue arrives with more men and start chasing old Joe through the fields, but he's too fast and quickly loses them. Then the group turns on young Joe, who rushes to steal a hoverbike and escape through the fields as well. He jumps off the bike after a few minutes so Abe's men follow an empty vehicle, then he takes out the piece of the map and discovers a marked spot. Moments later, Joe makes it to the location on the map and finds Sarah living alone with her son Sid in a farm. When Sarah sees him sneaking around, she comes out with a weapon and threatens to kill anyone who approaches her house, so Joe decides to stay hidden in the field for now. He watches the house for hours and soon he starts feeling sick because of withdrawal syndrome. Meanwhile Abe scolds Kid Blue for his failure, takes his gun, and breaks his hand with a hammer. In the evening, Sarah hears a noise outside and sees a mysterious man coming, so she opens fire. As she walks back she falls, so Joe comes out of hiding to help. The mysterious man turns out to be just a hobo, who runs away when he sees Joe's weapon. Then Joe throws up and finally collapses, but Sarah slaps him to keep him from passing out. Sid comes out too and shares his water with him. Back in the city, the police are looking for both Joes, so old Joe has to hide in the sewers. He starts seeing visions of Sarah and her slap, so he concentrates on his wife's picture not to forget her. The next morning, Joe wakes up handcuffed in the barn. Sarah comes over and gives him the keys while keeping him at gunpoint, asking him to leave. Joe refuses and shows her the map with the numbers, which leaves Sarah in shock. She immediately shoots him on the shoulder and asks for an explanation, causing a scar to appear on old Joe as well. Sarah already knows what a looper is, so Joe only has to tell her about his old self wanting to kill her son. In return, Sarah explains that the numbers are Sid's birthday and the med code of the hospital where he was born. She mentions two other kids were born in that hospital that day, meaning old Joe will be visiting them one by one. In the meantime, old Joe finds the first kid and after some hesitation, he shoots him. Then he rushes out of the house and takes a moment to have a breakdown. Nothing in his memories is changing, so he killed a child for nothing. In the evening, Abe's men find Joe and start chasing him through the city, so he runs through an alley to make the truck crash. In a dark building, Kid Blue uses a radio to spy on the police's transmissions and gets Joe's location too. Back to Sarah, she agrees to let young Joe stay for extra protection and she tends his wounds. 
After she goes to sleep, Sid shows Joe that he's connected two little frog toys so that Joe and Sarah can alert each other in case of emergency. To Joe's surprise, Sid explains Sarah isn't his real mother and that he remembers his birth mom, who died when he was a baby. Sid feels frustrated because he couldn't stop it. The next morning, Joe gives one of the frogs to Sarah and shares what Sid said. Sarah explains she's Sid's mother but she used to have a bad life in the city, so she left him in this farm with her sister to give him a better life. Sid grew up thinking his aunt was his birth mom. Joe thinks she should talk to Sid about this but Sarah tells him off. In the afternoon, Sarah is teaching Sid math but he soon snaps and says she isn't his mom, so she needs to stop lying or she'll get killed too. He then pushes Sarah and as his anger gets worse, it's revealed he has a form of extra powerful telekinesis. The house shakes as Sid screams and Sarah runs to hide in a safe until he calms down. Later Sarah checks on him and Sid apologizes. At that moment someone knocks on the door and Sarah opens it to find Jesse, one of Abe's men pretending to be a police officer searching for criminals. Sarah has no choice but to let him in to avoid suspicion and Joe hides behind the couch in case he's needed. He sees Sid coming downstairs, so he tries to tell him to go back with hand signs. Sid comes down anyway and rushes to the kitchen, making noise on purpose. Jesse rushes to the kitchen too, but Sid comes out through the other door and hides in the cupboard under the stairs. Joe follows him and in a few minutes the duo appears outside, thanks to a secret tunnel in the cupboard. They wait until Jesse leaves and reunite with Sarah. Meanwhile old Joe goes to another location on the map and is devastated to discover the second kid is Susie's son. He still remembers her fondly and he can't bring himself to act. Joe stands outside the apartment for a while and is caught by the security cameras, causing the footage to soon reach Kid Blue. Later that night, Sarah feels lonely and scared. She uses the frog to call Joe and he comes to her room, where they get naughty together. After they're done, Sarah reveals she has telekinesis too by making her lighter float. She also cries as she admits the guilt she felt when she left Sid with her sister. The next morning, Joe comes downstairs to find Jesse holding Sarah at gunpoint. Joe surrenders to make Jesse let Sarah go, but when they're about to leave, Sid appears on the stairs and accidentally trips. As the telekinesis makes everything in the room float including Jesse's gun, Sarah runs to tackle Joe out of the house. Sid lands on the floor without a scratch and furiously uses his powers to make Jesse float too, screaming until the whole room explodes. Joe realizes Sid will become the rainmaker and this power is why he'll be able to bring down entire syndicates on his own. Furious, he pushes Sarah for lying to him but she assures him Sid isn't a bad kid, he just loses control when he gets scared. That's how he killed Sarah's sister, through an accidental explosion. Ignoring her pleas, Joe starts searching for Sid, finding him in the field covered in blood. Seeing his traumatized face makes Joe comfort him instead of killing him. Then Joe tells that Jesse must have told the others about him, so Sarah must get ready to escape. Back to old Joe, he finally makes up his mind and bursts into Susie's apartment, pushing her away to find the kid. However when he enters the child's room, he's knocked out by Kid Blue with a taser. Kid Blue takes Joe to the club, where Abe is gathering his men to go to the farm. Kid Blue begins arguing with a guard and Joe uses the chance to attack. He kicks the guard and pushes Kid Blue back, shooting him with his own gun. Then he starts shooting all the guards, stealing another gun from the other room to bring them all down in minutes. Then he takes a hidden passage and continues to kill criminals as he makes his way through the club, throwing a bomb in the main area that destroys the security system. In the back room, Abe is terrified to hear Joe at the door. Moments later Kid Blue wakes up and finds everyone in the club dead, including Abe himself. However he also sees the location of the farm on the map. Minutes later, old Joe arrives at the farm in a car full of gold bars and throws one to his younger self, asking him to leave. Young Joe refuses and opens fire, but at that moment Kid Blue runs over him with a hoverbike. They start firing at each other and Kid Blue runs out of bullets, so Joe waits for him to be close enough and shoots him off, making the bike crash. After the smoke clears, Joe realizes his older self is gone. Near the house, Sarah and Sid are leaving on their truck, only to find the road blocked by older Joe. As he opens fire, Sarah speeds up to try to run him over. Sid panics and uses his powers, making the truck float up and land upside down. The duo survives and starts running through the field as Joe goes after them, continuing to shoot until a bullet grazes Sid's cheek. The kid begins unleashing his powers again, making Sarah and Joe float up and sending a shockwave that hits younger Joe when he approaches. A desperate Sarah begins talking sweetly to her son, telling him how much she loves him. Soon Sid calms down and makes his powers stop. Sarah runs to reunite with Sid and acts as a shield when old Joe raises his gun, ready to shoot. Young Joe watches this and realizes something, old Joe shooting Sarah is what will traumatize Sid into becoming the Rainmaker. To finally break the circle of revenge, young Joe decides to self-delete, making old Joe disappear. Afterward Sarah takes care of Sid's injury and puts him to bed. Then she returns to the scene of the incident, where she finds all the bars. She grabs Joe's watch and says a final goodbye, 